Hey everyone, this is Savoy here from BI Storyteller. And in the last video, I took you guys through a uh, demo of this key metrics overview. And I said that I would kind of, in the next video, I'll break this down and show you how I created it. So in today's video, what I'm going to show you is how I created this dynamic top end uh, selection. Right, so you could select the top five and look at those numbers, select the top n and look at the top the top ten product categories and so on and so forth. So let's go over to the Power BI desktop. And right now all I have here is one single measure for the total sales. Now we're going to calculate the product category on the total sales, or rather we're going to calculate the top product categories on the total sales. Now, one simple way to do this would be if I wanted to look at the uh, top 10 products, uh, I could simply create a chart like this. And under the visual filters, I could pull in the product category and then look at the top five or top 10 filters based on the total sales. Right, so now I can see the top five or top ten. If I change this value, I could see the top five and so on and so forth. However, this this is not the functionality uh, which is ideal for a uh, interactive dashboard, right? Otherwise, you would have to teach your users that you have to click on the visual, then go to the filters, and then select the top five or top ten. Is just too tedious uh, for a end user. So. As a developer, what you need to do is kind of make that interactive. So uh, that's why we create uh, these top uh, top n uh, categories, which people find easy to use. That's what makes the entire dashboard uh, interactive and gives you more value add. So I'm going to get rid of this right now. The first thing uh, we have to do uh, in order to create the dynamic top end functionality is to create a reference table right that's the first of the five steps that we're going to take to do that so uh, to create the table I need to go uh, enter data create a new table so my value uh, the category which is the top end and I'm going to create an index to sort this information by so I have my value as 3, 5, 10, and 15. So that's my top 3, top 5, top 10, and top 15. And 1, 2, 3, 4 for me to be able to sort this information. And I'll name this table top n. And load. Now this new table that we've created doesn't need to be uh, connected to any other table uh, on your in your relationship uh, window. So it's, it can be a standalone separate table. It doesn't need to be connected to any other table. Right. Now the first, we've created the reference table, but the first uh, measure that we need to create to be able to create the dynamic topping functionality is uh, the rank so we need to be able to rank the first thing we've got to do is to rank all the product categories based on the total sales so that's going to be our first measure it's equal to rank x oops rank x all i want to rank all of the products Or rather, I want to rank all of the product categories in the uh, product table as per the total sales. And I want this arranged in the descending order. So that's my first measure. So just to see if that works, I'm going to put in the product category, my total sales, and the product ranking. So there you have it. I have all of the products ranked 
as per the product categories. Uh, sorry, I have all the product categories ranked as per the total sales. So just increase the size of the font and there you go. Increase the size of the table as well. Now, if I were to pull in the top end values right now, it's really not going to work, but I'm just going to pull this in and create the uh, filters that I require. And make that 15. So right now, if I select any of these, it's really not going to work, right? And let me just sort these using the index. So uh, it's in order, my top three, top five, top 10, top 15. Okay, so the next measure I'm going to select, the measure, rather the next measure I'm going to create is on the top N table. Okay, so I'm going to say that if if the filter in this table has one value, uh, then give me the ranking or the product ranking or the top products based on uh, this selection or else we can select a default. So I'm going to go new measure. If has one value. So if the value column of the top end table has one value, then, and over here I can either use min or max, it really doesn't matter. I'll go min value from the top end table. Now, the alternate result is that if nothing, if no value is selected in my filter, then what should be the default? So I'm going to say the default should then be three. Okay, the default selection should be three if no value has been selected here. All right, so that's done. Now, the third measure I have to create is uh, basically to say that uh, if my selection over here, if my selection in this filter uh, or my or the value I've selected based on this filter is less than or equal to the product ranking, then give me the product ranking based on my selection here, right? So that's the third measure I'm going to create. So that's going to be If my product ranking is less than or equal to the selected top n, then 1 or 0. I'll show you exactly where this is going to be uh, used. And now my, for my final filter or my final uh, measure rather. So my new measure, which is the final measure, this is going to be my top n product so I'm going to go calculate total sales for the top n selected values okay so selected value from the my top n table and then go through all values of the product 
in the product category and then return the total sales and arrange it in a descending order. So if I now pull this in, So right now what it does is that it's returning everything, okay? As per the product category, my top end product category is returning all values for all the entire ranking of uh, 72 product categories. And here where this filter comes into play, right? So my product category in top end should not, is not zero. There you go. So now I have my top three selected, so I can see top three. If I, if I go to top five, I can see top five. If I go to top 10, I can see top 10 and top 15, all right? So this is how you create a dynamic top end function on your uh, reports or on your dashboards. Now, this particular measure which is the top one or the top, uh, which is one or zero, where we're saying that only if it's, a, if it's not zero, then show me those values because uh, this is how this functionality works. However, however, if I were to look at the same information by month, and this is my top end products, right, by month. Did I select the wrong measure? Give me one second. Yeah. So these are my these are my top three values. Uh, these are these are my values for my top three products month on month. So just to show you how this works. And if you see, if you notice that in this particular visual, I have not filtered it by one or zero. Okay, so if I use top five here, that number changes. If I use top 10, that number changes. So that one or zero or inclusive or exclu exclusive, exclusive is only required when you're looking at the data by the product category itself and not by any other value in the axis. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you loved it, hit subscribe. Uh, click the alarm bell to be notified whenever I, I whenever I upload another video. Uh, stay safe, and I will talk to you all soon. Thank you.